40 trophies obtained, 14 costumes unlocked, plus 5 secret accessories. 23 weapons fully maxed out, and yes, that means all 3 secret weapons too, which cost well over 7 million pesetas, 217 items purchased from the extra content shop, and 101 challenges completed. Hey everyone, and welcome to The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, we complete them. I completed Resident Evil 4 Remake, and it took me nearly 12 separate playthroughs with about 130 hours of total playtime. I never want to touch this game ever again, respectfully, because it is an absolute masterpiece that I've been drenched in for months. Even after Mercenaries Mode Hell, where I earned S++ ranks for all four characters across all three stages, I still give this game my completionist rating of complete it. The original's a masterpiece, this is a masterpiece, and here's why. Yes! All glory goes to the winner! does Leon S. Kennedy go from this to this? Okay, so time for a little mini history lesson here. Buckle up, kids, because old man Gerard is going to wax poetic for just a minute. Listen, I know I'm not the gaming historian. Norm is amazing, but context is key here. Resident Evil, or Biohazard if you're Japanese, has been going strong since 1996. Every entry has been groundbreaking in its own way, but perhaps none have had the industry-wide influence that Resident Evil 4 did in the years following its 2005 release. The action-oriented approach combined with an over-the-shoulder camera established a control scheme that would impact entire genres. This might sound like an over-exaggeration, but it is not. For die-hard Resident Evil fans like myself, I ain't Resident Evil 4 like it was a hot fudge Sunday. This fourth entry became the breakout hit of the entire franchise. Sort of the Harry Styles of the Resident Evil verse. Everyone wanted a piece of it, so much so that it has been ported to essentially everything with the screen, despite its origins as a GameCube exclusive. Part of its wide-ranging appeal is because RE4 is notably less horrifying than its predecessors. It is much more focused on delivering thrill than chills. I loved playing and completing Resident Evil 4 so much that it became one of my favorite games of all time. It is a consistently rewarding experience and still feels great to play, even now. But there are so many ways to play and purchase the game at this point that when Capcom announced the remake, my initial reaction was, who the f*** is this for? I can see why Resident Evil 2 and 3 were remade. They were older games that needed some kind of overhaul if they were going to be brought back for the modern console generations of today, and yes, I fully appreciated them. But the original Resident Evil 4 is still super solid. Even though it's over 15 years old, people still show up for Resident Evil 4, no matter what platform it's on. And just before they announced and released Resident Evil 4 Remake, they took the original and made it a VR game. The question stands, do we, society at large, really need a modern remake of Resident Evil 4? So here's Ryland. After playing it, after completing it, my answer is an enthusiastic, unequivocal yes. I will never doubt Capcom again. RE4 Remake takes everything great about the original game and amplifies it. That said, even if the game itself isn't very scary, completing this remake is a terrifying prospect at times. Resident Evil 4 Remake is not simply a remaster. I am treating this game as a completely new entity. And with that, its completion requirements are pretty staggering. There are about 40 trophies to earn on the PS5, but that's kind of the start. There are 101 in-game challenges. 
four difficulty modes, and I have to earn the highest ranking possible on each mode. On top of that, certain challenges, achievements, and so on require very specific playthroughs and techniques, such as only using a knife and handgun, or never speaking to the infamous merchant. There's an extra content shop in the main menu full of cosmetics, art, costumes, figurines, and gameplay altering weapons and accessories to purchase. Everything in the content shop is purchased with challenge points, which are earned by, you guessed it, completing challenges. This has been the standard fare of the most recent RE games. Most challenges are things you'll naturally do by simply playing it, maybe achieving a combat feat, beating the story, or just opening up photo mode. Others require the player to do specific things in certain chapters or with a set amount of weapons or set pieces, meaning they are missable. Every weapon, except consumable grenades and knives, can be upgraded to improve its stats. This is as simple as visiting the merchant and throwing money at him. But every weapon also has a bonus upgrade, like infinite ammo, double the fire rate. These only become available after you max out all of its other stats or purchase an exclusive ticket from the merchant with purple jewels called spinels. You can find spinels out in the world, or you can earn them by completing various side quests written on blue sheets of paper. Now, it is impossible to upgrade every weapon to its maximum stats in a singular playthrough without money-making exploits, but New Game Plus will get you there eventually. At certain safe rooms, you can also play a shooting gallery minigame. And this gallery requires perfect execution to maximize your score and reach the highest ranks. The higher your rank in the gallery, the more tokens you earn. And tokens are used in a gotcha machine where you'll earn extra charms that have in-game usefulness. But earning every charm in the game is entirely out of the player's hands. And honestly, I think it's designed that way. No one is supposed to get all 32 charms. You'll need a healthy helping of pure dumb luck and many, many, many playthroughs. All I can really recommend is to grab the ones that you're looking for, because each time you play the game, whatever coins you put in are predetermined in that run. There's no reloading, there's no safe scumming. What you get in that run is what you get, and that's it. So you think I'm done, right? No, nope, not even close. Making its triumphant return is Mercenaries Mode, an alternate horde mode accessible from the main menu where waves of enemies are hurled at the player. In Mercenaries, you can pick up from four characters, each with their own weapons and specialties, and kill everything that moves until you finally succumb and are given a ranking. Currently, there are only three stages to master with each character. To earn the highest ranking of S++, players must keep their combo meter going by killing enemies quickly and creatively in order to get anywhere close to the 1 million points points needed. Now, amazingly, nearly every single thing in RE4 Remake gives you something upon completion. Whether it's a new weapon or accessory or ranking, there is always something to earn. This is a game designed to be completed, and that funnels players towards doing so. And although my first playthrough and my final 12th playthrough were entirely different experiences, the process of completing RE4 is always massively enjoyable. Resident Evil 4 already had amazing bones. The remake takes the base form and improves it even further. Like Las Plagas, Resident Evil 4 Remake has been reborn as a superior being. It keeps what was already great and modernizes everything else. The entire game feels much more streamlined, and it all starts with the story. This is the tale of Leon S. Kennedy, the most beautiful man in the world, as he travels to a mysterious town in rural Spain to rescue the president's daughter, Ashley. A lot has changed since the event of RE2 Remake. Leon has shaken off the trauma of having the worst first day on the job of all time and turned that trauma into marketable skills. He's a professional working for the US government as a super badass secret service agent. He was trained by the best and most unhinged superior you could ever ask for. Once Leon arrives in Europe, things quickly go haywire. Turns out Ashley has been kidnapped by a death cult whose leader, Sadler, wants to dominate the world. Leon must shoot, stab, roundhouse kick, and suplex his way to the evil Sadler before it's too late and the parasites take over everything. So unlike previous Resident Evil stories, 4 pushed the envelope with a more over-the-top tale. It's like a late 70s, early 80s action movie, right down to a late game set piece that is right out of Apocalypse Now. But even if the claustrophobic terror has been toned down, many hallmarks of the series are present in some form. There are lock and key puzzles where both the locks and keys are weird animal shapes, and the general sense of unease and dread remains everywhere but this remake makes several mechanical changes that i think are for the better the devs clearly
clearly wanted to bring the game in line with the RE2 and RE3 remakes, as well as the more modern entries in the franchise like Resident Evil 7 and 8 Village. And they definitely achieved that goal. The first thing you'll notice upon booting the game up is how good it looks. Capcom's RE engine is firing on all cylinders, rendering every rotten wood shack and rusty bear trap with impeccable detail. The original game looked great for its time, but the entire package has received an incredible glow up here, and it runs amazingly on the PlayStation 5. There are three big sections to trek through, each with memorable areas and set pieces. The village, the castle, the island. The village features the iconic town square, which serves as a shocking reminder of Resident Evil 4's combat goals. The original game subverted the established survival horror formula and overcame expectations in the stunning village square opening sequence. Instead of frantically backing away from zombies and shooting them in the head in a narrow hallway, RE4 asked you to stand your ground, aim your gun, and fire away. The game forced you to stop and pop. And though it took some getting used to, it felt very empowering. This remake manages to take the same shooting formula and revitalizes it again for an entire generation of people who grew up playing the original. You still have to aim before you can shoot, but this time you aren't anchored in place when you do so. Obviously, this has been reflected in titles like RE2 and RE3 Remake. Leon can stoically march forward, but when talking about Resident Evil 4, this subtle change really surprised me in such a great way. If you're someone who has completed the original version of 4 and who's intimately familiar with every encounter, hello, that's me. One big surprise is in the opening moments. The initial onslaught is one of the most memorable video game intros ever. This time, there are way more villagers to deal with, enemy placement is different, and places that were safe to the camp are no longer safe. It's a remix of expectations and served to shake me up and even get that old adrenaline pumping. After making it through the village and fighting a few bosses, you eventually hit the gorgeously detailed castle. This is where most of the Ashley stuff is introduced. A large portion of RE4 is essentially an escort mission, but the remake has made it feel tough without being annoying. Yes, Ashley still gets picked up and yells for Leon to help her, but this time around, my ears didn't bleed. It also helps that Ashley no longer has her own health bar to worry about that you have to manage, and that her AI in general seems a little snappier. The final area of the game features the most horrifying enemies, tougher boss fights, and the most ridiculous set pieces. RE4 is still the only game with Chopper Mike, the most beloved, least developed NPC in the series. I both want to know everything about Chopper Mike, but also want to keep him shrouded in mystery forever. This is also the only game in the franchise to feature a jet ski escape sequence, and the fact that the remake keeps that intact is a sign that nature is healing. Every area is exquisitely detailed, which I especially noticed in my first playthrough. To complete this game, you need to become the most meticulous person alive. Since I had to play the game all the way through on all difficulties, I figured I would start on assisted mode. Assisted mode was purely to find 100% of the items knock at every side quest, do as many challenges and trophies as possible in the game, all in one big run. Finding every item isn't that hard. You can actually purchase maps that literally tell you where everything is. And if you've picked up the deluxe version of the game, there's even an expanded treasure map with even more stuff to collect. Treasures mostly serve as loot that can be sold for more money. You know what they say, more money, more guns that can explode a Ganado's head with one shot. But the real thing I did on my first playthrough was prep for every other future playthrough. Learned where their pain points would be, built up my inventory, mastered the shooting gallery. To complete Resident Evil 4, you'll need to forget a lot of the things about what you knew of the original and look at what's just right in front of you. And what's right in front of you are bear traps. Seriously, why do they keep putting all these bear traps again? But Luckily, that's not the only significant change here. Gone are the quick time events where players learn they couldn't relax even during cutscenes for fear of getting wrecked and losing progress, which is kind of ironic because Resident Evil 4 was one of the games that kind of kicked off the revolution of quick time events. Obviously, God of War is one of them too. Instead, cutscenes are just cutscenes, and you can actually put the controller down and watch them like a normal person if you want to. There are gonna be some changes that not everyone will love, but I think that makes things more interesting. Knives being breakable is at the top of that list. In the original, it was common practice to shoot an enemy until they fell over, then run over and knife the sh out of them to conserve your ammo. You can't quite exactly do that here, at least not in your first few playthroughs, because even Leon's standard combat knife has durability everyone's favorite non-controversial mechanic. After a few stabs, the knife eventually will break and cannot be used again until you pay the merchant to fix it. Guess he's got a grit stone and some crazy glue underneath that robe of his. The knife also gives Leon the ability to parry almost anything, including the dang chainsaw. I was surprised by how well having a parry fit into the game. 
and it makes sense for Leon's character. Leon having Sekiro like pairing reflexes only cements his status as a highly trained super secret agent. And I appreciate that it's here. There are also some light stealth elements added where Leon can insta kill unaware enemies with his knife. Stealth is not much of a major factor in the game, but it serves to change up the gameplay here and there. And the game doesn't force stealth upon you unexpectedly and for no reason, like a certain protocol did. It wouldn't be a new game in 2023, let alone a new Resident Evil game without crafting elements, so naturally those are here as well. It's not complicated or really even all that deep, but crafting adds just enough of a different flavor to looting and shooting to make things feel fresh. As I blasted my way through this game, I was reminded of another game I completed recently this year in 2023, Dead Space Remake. Dead Space and RE4 have always been linked in my mind, and not just because one was heavily inspired by the other back in the day. Both are heavily cinematic games that I have a personal relationship with, where part of the completion fun was derived from being able to show these games off. RE4 Remake falls firmly into that category as well, by featuring a story that is coherent and stunning gameplay that is amazing to see in action. After playing the demo release earlier in 2023, I was worried about the release of this game. Take a listen to this weird recording that Cameron, our writer, made of me while we were doing a writing session about this video. It felt like it, it was going to be a little more difficult than I anticipated. Um, the controls just didn't feel 100% with me. Um, the visuals weren't really like there. I, it was, I was very excited regardless, but it just I was a little worried that it was going to be like it needed more time in the oven. Um, I'm very glad that I was wrong. I guess I shouldn't have been surprised as the quality of these remakes have always been pretty great across the board. Resident Evil 4 Remake pays homage to the past, but respects the present. The way Capcom handles certain story elements and characters is a tremendous improvement. Narrative and structure are important to me, and it's clear the developers have made an effort to clean some things up with these remakes. By viewing them as a chance to tell a deeper story about Umbrella Corp and this fantastic cast of characters, each new remake serves as a bridge to the future of Resident Evil storytelling. I love how this remake directly references Resident Evil 2 Remake. The events of that game had a massive impact on Leon and even the world at large. What went down in Raccoon City changed the world, and this remake makes that much clearer. The writing makes a huge effort to connect the dots and link things up a lot more smoothly, especially in regards to Luis and Krauser. Luis is hands down the most charismatic character in the remake. In the remake, his charm is matched by a desire to right his past wrongs for his sins. He doesn't get much screen time in the original, but in the remake, he gets a lot more, and yet he feels even more fleshed out. The remake also makes his connections to Umbrella Corp and Ada Wong much more explicit. I loved riding in a minecart with Luis, and I genuinely felt feelings for him when he had to deal with the thing he had to deal with. If you've never played this game before, but if you have, you know what I'm talking about. The Krauser stuff is also spelled out much more cleanly. Krauser trained Leon after the Raccoon City incident, turning him into the fighter he is here. But Krauser has his own motivations and reasons to hate Leon. In the original game, I kind of found Krauser's existence to be a little random, but the remake includes just enough backstory and text files to make him seem intriguing and menacing, and more importantly, purposeful. You don't need to track down a Wii or Wii U and a copy of the game Resident Evil The Dark Side Chronicles to feel the history between Krauser and Leon this time around. All their exchanges are as heightened as can be, but they get the emotion across. The actors sell the hell out of their lines. Even after completing this game half a dozen times, I still didn't mind watching certain cutscenes over and over again, even though I could skip them if I wanted to. Krauser is gruff and intimidating, Luis is dripping with charm, and Leon strikes a balance between authoritative special agent and deadpan comedian. Seriously, this is still a deeply funny game. As haunting as the opening cutscene is, where a woman is sacrificed on an altar surrounded by chanting cultists, there's so many moments of absurdity and machismo that you can't help but laugh at loud. The villains are so extra, though I did find myself missing Salazar's little hat. Where's the hat, Capcom? Come on. There are so many distinctive elements of Resident Evil 4 that might feel sacrilegious to change, but I still enjoyed them. Yeah, the merchant's new voice takes a little bit getting used to, but he does grow on you, I promise. I guess stepping back and looking at this whole thing, I found the plot, characters, and world building to be much more grounded and thus more effective in the remake. To be clear, they didn't suddenly turn this game into The Last of Us or anything. The finale still involves blasting a horrible tentacle monster in the face eyeball with a rocket launcher and then ripping through a tunnel on a jet ski 
foggy as an entire island explodes behind you. But the world feels a little more cohesive and I cannot wait to see this trend continue with, what's next, Resident Evil 5? No, you know what, no. I'm that guy. I like Resident Evil 5. It's an amazing co-op experience. It was weird how they did it all. I am officially ready for the inevitable ultra high def remake. Let's go. Things may be slightly less crazy in this remake story-wise, but the completion requirements have been pushed to their limits. I said it before, I'll say it again. I put well over 100 hours into just completing the regular campaign, not including mercenaries mode. This might have been draining and demoralizing, and hey, maybe I'm getting really bad at video games. That is possible. There's just too many games and so much time in a day. But this remake gets it right with constant bonuses and fewer restrictions, completing Resident Evil 4 Remake feels remarkably satisfying. Resident Evil as a series is known for having extremely intricate completion processes with increasingly absurd requirements, and this remake is no exception. It is full of magnificent, game-changing unlockables that feel amazing to find and are even more incredible to actually use. This is a game that keeps on giving, and yes, still feels rewarding even after beating it several times. That said, I'm very tired. Capcom made a wonderfully polished experience that, at least for now, I don't want to touch again. My main goals were to finish the story on each difficulty with an S plus ranking. Over the course of doing so, I would max out every weapon at least on one playthrough, find every collectible, and complete every in-game challenge and trophy associated. Fortunately, the game itself gives you tools and weapons from the extra content shop that are very useful to achieve those high rankings. First playthrough, relatively easy. Casually speaking, it only took about 20 to 30 hours but that was mostly because i was extra meticulous so i could earn that bandit raider and burglar trophies all in one go not difficult at all mind you you just have to make sure you don't progress beyond certain points of no return before you find all the treasures in any given area there was also the playthrough where i made a point to find all the clockwork castilians there are 16 of these little wooden wind-up dolls spread throughout the entire game one per chapter. You can complete this task over several playthroughs, as destroying each Castilian carries over, but I wanted to do it all on my first go around. Destroying all 16 lets you purchase the Primal Knife from the Extra Content Shop, so why is it important to unlock the Primal Knife as soon as possible? Because another long-standing tradition in the Resident Evil completion verse is the knife-only run. This remake makes it a knife and pistol-only run, but it's still pretty tough. The Primal Knife has an exclusive upgrade that makes it indestructible. With an indestructible knife at his side, Leon can parry anything and stab anyone without ever worrying about the knife breaking at an inconvenient moment. The Primal Knife is just the first of several secret weapons. The Chicago Sweeper, or Chicago Typewriter if you're a purist, is available after completing the story on professional mode with at least an A rank. Doing so is pretty tough, but the machine gun is really powerful and has an exclusive upgrade for unlimited ammo, so it is a worthy reward. Machine guns and knives are all well and good for eliminating hordes of parasite infested villagers and hooded illuminados. But if you're anything like me, you might be craving something that gives you a little more bang for your buck something with an explosive personality, something that is a cannon, but for your hand. The hand cannon, I'm talking about the hand cannon. This big f off piece of weaponry is a magnum that kicks like a horse. Now, currently there are two ways to unlock this absurdly overpowered gun. Beating the game on professional mode with any ranking, but without using any bonus weapons at all. Or you can do what I like to call the easy way. That is clearing all three stages of mercenaries mode with at least an S rank with any character. Now, mercenary mode is no joke when going for S++, but this feat isn't too difficult if you take the time to develop some strategies for each stage. A upgrade ticket for the hand cannon grants you unlimited ammo, making the game significantly easier. But there is one final weapon that becomes available for purchase only in New Game Plus. The infinite rocket launcher costs 2 million pesetas, which sounds impossible to earn. Even if you kill all the birds in the game, there's no easy way to find money in a single playthrough. But if you sell some of your guns and save up some of your most precious items, by combining certain jewels, you could have enough. These weapon unlocks are just the tip of the iceberg. There are several accessories that also have game-breaking benefits when equipped, and they all have their own unique unlock requirements. Leon's wolf tail can only be unlocked with a fresh save. 
The requirements are to finish an assisted mode playthrough with an S plus ranking, meaning I had to beat the game in under four hours. This means a lot of juking past enemies instead of stopping to shoot them and defeating bosses in as little time as possible. The wolf tail looks cute and more importantly, it gives Leon extra power with his melee attacks. Remember a few seconds ago when I said if I had to clear the game with an S plus ranking on the higher difficulty other than assisted, I wasn't sure if I was able to do it right out the gate? Well, to unlock the deer antlers, I had to complete a standard difficulty run with an S plus ranking, which meant another fresh save file and a completion time of under five hours. Now, fortunately, this wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. The deer antlers as your reward makes knife attacks way stronger. Combine this with my unlocked primal knife, and the minimalist trophy just became a whole lot more attainable. Then you have the gas mask, the chicken hat, and Ashley's suit of armor. The gas mask unlocks after beating the story on professional mode on any difficulty. The chicken hat also unlocks when you beat hardcore mode with an S plus, and the suit of armor for completing hardcore with at least an A rank. Each one of these is very useful for different things. The gas mask grants aim assist, which essentially is assisted mode for you right out the gate and the chicken hat reduces the amount of damage you take. Ashley's iconic suit of armor is one of the best and most necessary unlocks in the game. This renders Ashley invincible and makes it so that enemies cannot pick her up and carry her away, meaning Ashley basically is invincible and the whole game becomes a cakewalk. But the most useful accessory in the game is probably the cat ears. Not only do they make Leon look extremely kawaii, they give you unlimited ammo for all of your weapons, except for the rocket launcher. Unlocking the cat ears means earning an S plus ranking on professional mode with 15 saves or less. It's a beast of a run, but can be made significantly easier if you've unlocked any of the aforementioned secret weapons and their exclusive upgrades. This is one of my favorite aspects of Resident Evil 4. Yes, the requirements for each secret accessory are steep, but by completing other aspects of the game, they have become gradually more within reach. Even if you're coming into this game as a Resident Evil novice, you can hit those S plus rankings by using an accessory or powerful secret weapons. Even after buying all the accessories and weapons in the extra content shop, there were dozens of things left for me to purchase with my thousands of remaining challenge points. Concept art and character models are cool, but I'm a real sucker for costumes. And this remake has some really fun aesthetic unlocks. I love that you can unlock Leon's jacket from the original game, but I also really like the DLC costumes too. Leon's casual outfit is absolutely something I would wear on a daily basis. Just look at those really cool joggers, man. My man looks like he's about to go pick up his kid from school. And romantic Leon could be stepping out of a new 3D version of Castlevania. I also enjoy the stark differences between each of Ashley's costumes. Default Ashley is going to the Reliant K concert. Romantic Ashley is vibing out to Mothica. And casual Ashley is crying at a Fallout Boy show. Being able to change costumes is a small thing, but it makes me playing the campaign over and over feel more fresh each time. Completing every challenge to earn enough points to purchase every single thing in the extra content shop is honestly something you'll naturally do as a completionist. And as far as the platinum trophy goes, I'd say 90% of the trophies are easily obtainable. And to be honest, I accidentally got the platinum when I wasn't paying attention. Because I had to play the game so many times and earn so many rankings, some of these extra items aren't a part of the trophy roadmap. So by proxy of completing the game over and over again on various modes and runs, I got the platinum well before I was done completing the game. Even earning an S rank on every shooting gallery is tough, but not impossible. So why did I have so many runs when it came to completing this game? It should have been each difficulty at S plus and that was it. Truth be told, I failed. I had two runs that I got to the end of the game and just didn't have enough time under my belt. I destroyed the completion criteria and in the end it became a waste. Luckily for me though, I did get high enough ranks, so I did earn stuff that I would use. Getting stuff like the Ashley armor in a failed run was amazing, because that meant for future runs, eventually, I would be just fine. So I earned S plus on every difficulty level. I earned the minimalist trophy by completing the game with just a knife and a handgun. I found every treasure, uncovered every collectible, and finished every single side quest multiple times. In at least one playthrough, I maxed out all the guns, bought every attache case, and I dominated the shooting gallery, getting all the challenges, including the one challenge that forces you to never miss a single shot to get S++. Surely that's enough to complete the game, right? Wrong. Mercenaries mode. Now, when the game launched, mercenaries mode was not available, but it came out soon after. In this mode, you choose a character, pick a level, and survive as long as you can. I had to complete every stage with every character, earning the highest ranking possible. Not S rank, not S plus, 
that would be way too easy instead the maximum ranking in mercenaries mode on each stage with every character is s plus plus now look i personally have had anxiety about mercenaries mode since it was first announced soon after release not because it's unfun to play it's actually one of my favorite modes ever in resident evil let alone resident evil 4 but that s plus plus ranking is a hell of a mountain to climb for some characters reaching that rank was a snap for others the ceiling felt much much higher at first only leon is available but you earn an a rank and you'll unlock Luis. earning an a rank with Luis, and you'll get krauser and krauser begets hunk opening up new stages is pretty simple too just clear the village to unlock the castle and the castle to unlock the island no sweat but the gulf between s rank and s plus plus rank is pretty vast to earn s plus plus you have to earn over 1 million points now for me this is easier with some characters over others hunk's weaponry and special melee attacks make him the easiest character to play louise is one of the more difficult characters to master but no matter who you're playing as mercenaries is crazy arcadey fun and personally speaking i am so glad they brought this back and would love to see ada and wesker return as playable characters sometime down the line with supposed dlc rumors around the corner my only real beef with mercenaries mode is that there's only one unlock the hand cannon which i've already established and you don't even need to hit s plus with every character to unlock that much less s plus plus so really s plus plus is just pure bragging rights which in the end kind of a bummer i would have loved another secret costume or something for mastering this mode entirely resident evil 4 remake is a fantastic polished completion experience and yes not everyone will want to play through the campaign a dozen times like i ended up doing you at home can do it less you're gonna do it better it's possible to do it in eight or maybe even six playthroughs again i made human mistakes and errors upon these playthroughs because i was playing the game like most gamers do no guide just blind pure confidence and only looking things up when i felt like i was lost or struggling but by the time i figured it all out it took me 105 hours to complete the base game an additional 25 hours to complete the mercenaries mode clocking in at 130 hours total the platinum trophy never feels out of reach and those in-game challenges are pretty fun and they're a great change of pace that encourage you to use all the tools you will have available but what i like best of all about resident evil 4 remake is that it includes a bonus that anyone can see if you beat the game there's a little special something in the credits i'm talking about the end credit song a made for the game track with lyrics that references themes of everything you just played you're the hunter and then you're the prayed absolutely i'm so glad that big budget games are doing this more frequently and there is one final unlock that i haven't talked about yet upon beating the game one time you will see a new title screen instead of the dark and creepy forest the screen becomes a slow pan over the famous village it's a reminder of one of the best game intros of all time and encourages you to start up a new playthrough and start working your way towards completion despite me and my skill being great at times and bad at times completing resident evil 4 remake was fun as hell through and through for many this is the most revered resident evil game what capcom has done to ensure that the legacy of resident evil is always remembered is quite frankly astonishing yes it's an entirely new game but this remake also takes the best parts of the original and makes them better it is constantly rewarding and remains thrilling to play. Even after 130 hours, I give Resident Evil 4 Remake my rating of completed. Thanks for watching, and hey, take a look at my other Resident Evil Remake videos with 2 and 3. Catch you guys later. In the meantime, I'll be up in the sky with Chopper Mike being rad.